Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we discussed the last part of the rounds, which was the mixed columns, uh, the last operation. Now, the last thing we have to do uh, here for the advanced encryption standard is to discuss the key schedule. And of course, we also have to discuss how to decrypt uh, using the AES. Um, but for now, let's look at the key schedule for, uh, for the AES. So we're going to look at uh, uh, the details of this. Uh, it's also very involving. It has a lot of like, structure inside it. So we'll have to do this in a, uh, maybe well, one or two videos. So let's just start with uh, for the first part. So uh, we have to recall uh, that what we did uh, a while ago when we were discussing the rounds of the advanced encryption standard. So if you recall, uh, the number of rounds depends on the key size. And remember, there are three key sizes that you can have for the AES. You can have 128 bits of, of the key length, you can, have, you can have 192 bits, or you can have 256 bits. Now, depending on the key length, you will have a number of rounds. So for 128 bits, you will have 10, for 192, we'll have 12, and for 256, we'll have 14 rounds. Uh, so we have to discuss uh, individually what are the key schedules for each individual individual key length because it will depend on the number of rounds. So in general, this is what's going to happen. So what's going to happen here is that the number of sub keys that I want to generate from the key schedule is always going to be equal to the number of rounds plus one. And remember, the reason for that is because the first round of the advanced encryption standard takes two keys. Um, if you don't recall what I'm saying, you have to go back to the uh, that video and watch that again. If you remember, round number one takes two keys. One of them is called key sub zero, and the other one is called key one. And so that's the reason. The other rounds will take only one key, but the first round will take two. So that's round. That's why we have to produce uh, the number of rounds plus one sub key. So in this for for example, if I want to look at the key length. Of 128 bits, I have to produce 11, 11 uh, sub keys. Now, all the sub keys, all of them are gonna be 128 bits, even for these other key lengths. So, all the sub keys will have 128 bits, whether it is coming from this key length or 192 or 256. All the sub keys will have 128 bits. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to look at what happens with this key length, 128 bits. So that means, again, we need to produce 11 sub keys uh, for all the rounds that we need. One, because the first round takes two sub keys. All right. So this key schedule for, uh, for the 128-bit uh, key, uh, as I mentioned, in, we need to produce 11 sub keys, and this is the diagram for the first round of the key schedule. Now, I have to explain in detail what this is, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So, and explain the notation and what all the arrows mean here. So th this first part here is just the original key. So the K0, K1 up to K15 that you see there is just you take 128 bits and you divide it into bytes. So every K here, K0, K1, K2, K3, and so forth, all of them represent bytes, so eight bits each. So that's why we have 16 of these Ks from zero to 15. So basically that's what this one is. So this here is just the original key, whatever the 128 bits uh, are. So that is this notation here. Now, remember these arrows here represent that in here I have through here, I have going through here at 32 bits. Now, why is it 32 bits? Because what I'm actually doing is, uh, once I take my 128 bits here that I have, I look at it in terms of bytes. So I'm gonna have 16 bytes, and I'm gonna take uh, sets of four. So I'm gonna take K, K sub zero, K1, K2, and K3. So I have this uh, four bytes, and that's why I have 32 bits there because I, every k is a bit so eight times four that's a 32 uh, exactly the same for the next uh, block so i have a block of four bytes which is again 32 bits similar for k 
8 through K11 and similar for K12 to K15. These are 32 bits, each one of these uh, four blocks that you see over here. All right, so that's what the arrows mean here. So original key divided into bytes, then into blocks of four. Now, this arrow that comes into here, it means that I'm doing some kind of transformation here. I'm not doing any transformation here, the big, uh, here. So just these four bytes that are here, I just copy here to W0. Now this W0 is just notation. It just means that that's where I'm gonna store W0, W1, W2, W3, and blah, blah, blah. All of those are gonna be the places where I'm gonna store the bytes for my sub keys. Now, as you can see here, uh, nothing is going on here. So I just copy these four bytes into these four bytes here, these four bytes into these four bytes here. So this W0, W1, W2, and W3, these are gonna be the sub keys. That's what we're gonna call rounds K0. That's the first sub key. And as you can see here, there is nothing going on here in between. So there's no transformation, no sort, no... Um, permutation, nothing like that. So basically what we're saying here is that the first sub key that we call key zero is exactly the same as the original key. So that will be this, the first sub key, key sub zero, key zero. That's important. So let me say that again. So what I'm saying is the first sub key of the key schedule is exactly the same as the original, original key. It's exactly the same, the first one. Now the next sub keys of course are gonna be uh, change uh, to produce other keys for the for the rounds. Now, what is the change? So this diagram here in the middle, it tells me how this transformation is gonna happen. Now, as you can see here, I have a box here that says G. This is uh, kind of similar to the F function of the DES. If you remember the S, the F function of the DES, uh, it helped us do the rounds. In this case, this uh, G function is gonna help us do the key schedule. So this G here, basically what this function is gonna do, and we're gonna look at this into uh, detail, is this function G is gonna take in 32 bits, so because, you know, this comes from here, so from K12 to K15, I take 32 bits, nothing is going on here, so this W3 that is here is exactly the same as this four bytes that you see here. Now it goes through here and it goes directly to the function G. The function G then is gonna take an input of 32 bits, is gonna transform those 32 bits that we will see later how, and is gonna output another 32 bits. Now that's th those 32 bits that are here output by the G are gonna be bitwise sort with W0, which is exactly the same as the original four first bytes. So you take the four first bytes of your key, you're gonna sort that with the output of the function G, and remember this function G is taken as an input the last four bytes of the key. So this uh, does here the bitwise sort with these four first bytes and the output of G coming from the last four bytes. That sort bitwise, so in here, this sort would actually be the next four bytes of my round key, round key one, basically the next sub key. So what I'm saying here is that this W4 is equal, this W4 that is right here is equal to sort, bitwise sort of W0 and the output of the function G. So that will, that will be the W4. And now this W4 is gonna contain four bytes or 32 bits, and it's gonna be the source of the output of G in W0. So that's what the W4 here is. Now let's look at this diagram and let's keep uh, uh, saying what it's doing. Now, the next four bytes in the next key, which is key one, I'm gonna call those four next bytes, I'm gonna call that W5. Now that W5, as you can see from, from the arrow, it comes from here, and what is that? So what is this one that is right here? So this one is actually equal to the sort of dove, this output that is right here. It, what is this output? That's W4. So it's gonna be W5 is gonna come from W4, 
bitwise sort with w1 that's what that means okay so let me say that again so the w5 is equal to the bitwise sort of whatever w1 is and w4 and you see this kind of pattern repeats here 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 and here so the same thing is going to happen now for w6 now what is w6 w6 is coming from a bitwise sort what is this bitwise sort that i have here where it is coming from w2 and it comes from here now what is in this arrow here then this arrow here is basically just w5 so what i'm saying here is the following i'm saying that w6 is equal to the bitwise sort of w2 and w5 similar here for w7 it's going to be exactly the same situation w7 which is this uh, four last bytes of the, my next um, sub key or round key is going to be equal to the bitwise sort of this w6 and the w3 that is here so you bitwise sort the w3 and w6 and you get this w7 okay i hope that was clear now if it is not uh, clear for you i suggest you uh, go back and, um, and watch this part again because this is going to be important so this is the process of the first two sub keys that is right here this process and this thing here is going to repeat again exactly the same diagram that i'm marking here down with this uh, red arrow this diagram is going to repeat itself for the next key and i'm going to show you that so let's let me show you the whole diagram so so i hope it's not very small for you here um so this diagram that I, i'm pointing out here is the one that i have here up above that is i zoom zoomed in here this one is exactly the same as the one that is right here now what's going to happen here is the next round is going to produce round key two or the sub key two that is going to be exactly the same as this one so it's going to take w4 w5 w6 and w7 and it's going to this diagram that i'm pointing out there with the red arrow this diagram will repeat again over here in this region and you repeat again and you repeat again so it's the same diagram that you have here for the other sub keys and finally this is going to be the last um round that's going to produce round key 10 now remember what i mentioned how many keys do we need sub keys 11 and they're actually 11 because we start counting from zero so zero one two up to 10 if you count from zero then this whole thing will be 11 sub keys so the last one will just be uh, the same exactly the same diagram that i have here is exactly the same diagram that i have over here i uh, just as as i explained earlier and so this one will repeat here again the same thing and this w's that are here is just basically the uh bytes that are in the sub keys all right so so what i said basically was the following thing so i'm gonna store the parts of my sub keys i'm gonna store them in this things that i'm calling w now this is just notation just to uh make things easier for for us to write so it's going to be w0 through w43 so that's going to hold all the bytes of all the sub keys uh, from the first sub key up to the 11th key each of these w that are here all of them are 32 bit blocks so every one of them is 32 bits bits because it's composed of of four bytes and so for example if we start with the uh 128 bit uh, key if you can see here this is uh, 128 uh, bits now the case as I, I mentioned earlier the case are just the bytes of this part here so what I, if you see this uh, picture here this is just the same exactly the same as this one as this 128 bit key but I'm gonna divide it into bytes so the first byte I call it k0 k1 k2 I didn't complete all of them are here i didn't put all in yellow because it will be so crowded so you won't be able to see anything so i'm just saying i'm just writing down k0 k1 and k2 now after that 
what you really want is you want to make the blocks into the W0. Now, what is W0? W0 is the first four bytes. So it's going to be K0, K1, K2, and K3. And I'm marking this down here with yellow. So this W0, this zeros and ones that you see here is exactly the original 128-bit uh, key. So I'm going to divide it into four parts. The first part, I'm going to call that W0. The second part, which is uh, here, and I didn't mark it, was W1, W2, and W3. Now remember that this guy itself is the first sub key. The key, original key is exactly the first sub key. So that's the notation here. And what I mentioned in these equations that are here is what I just mentioned to you in the diagram. So this this equation that is here is what I told I told you in the diagram. It is exactly what the diagram is saying, but this is in a more let's call this a mathematical way. So I'm saying W4 is W0 and this a bitwise source of the output of the function g and the function g takes us an input w3 so remember this equation here w4 is equal to w0 source g of w3 this equation is exactly what it says in the picture so let me scroll up here all the way to the uh, zoom operation so you see here this one here w4 is the bitwise source of w0 and the output of the function g who takes an, is an input w3 that's exactly what i have in the equation and these other equations that you see there uh, let me scroll down here all the way down and these other equations the ones that you see there here now it's just what i mentioned there in the uh in the diagram so this Equations are exactly the same what the diagram says, but just more mathematical. Which one do you use? So which one do you want to implement? So whatever is uh, easier for you. So if you actually, actually, if you have to implement this in software, you probably want to use something like this to write your lines of code. But to remember is, I think it's easier to remember diagrams, at least for me. So it's easier to, to just remember the diagrams to just write down the equations. Now, um, so I just wanted to show you this again here, so to emphasize what these uh, things are, right? So let, let's just uh, re recall again what is, how, what is this W7? What is that? Why is it that equal to W6 plus W3? So let's go here and see that W7, which is the last four bytes of the second sub key, which we are calling round key one. What is that equal to? W7 comes from the width Y sort of W6 and W3. That's exactly what I have here. Wise W7 is W6 plus the bit Y sort of W3. And that's exactly what the key schedule does. Now, um, of course, the big part of the key schedule will, of course, be w, uh, this uh, function here, which is the function G, because we already know how to do bit Y sort. So we exactly know what's going on here with these sorts here, the bit Y sort. So we know the operation. The only thing that is kind of, let's say, mysterious here for the moment will be what this function G is doing. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look at the details of what this function G does. How does it take a 32-bit input and transforms that into another 32-bit output so you can sort it with whatever the key is here. And that's going to uh, be for all the rounds. Now, one thing that is important, and I'm going to finish this video with that, is that this function G that is right here depends on the round. So it's not going to be the same as we had for the DES that the function F is just the function F. This function F uh, actually depends on whatever the round is. So for this round, the function G is going to look, it's going to do something, and for the next round, it's going to do something different. So it's going to depend on the round. So I'm going to stop the video now, so now I'll see you in the next video with a detailed explanation of what this function G is.